Are you filming? Yep. Really? Yep. You didn't tell me you started it. Yeah, well, we gotta open that box right there. All right, let's open a box. A friend of ours who we met through the reptile hobby and happens to be pretty famous actually, but we don't want to get into that. Instead, we're focusing on turtles today because he really likes turtles and he has an awesome pond set up for his community of turtles at home. He wanted to add a new species that was eye-catching and yet, yet could get along with the other species he had and could be fed a commercial pellet diet pretty easily and didn't have a special diet requirement. So we came across some albino pink-bellied side-neck turtles and he definitely wanted a pair. So what we did was, since he was a little nervous on going online and purchasing them himself, but we're pretty familiar with it, we offered to buy them, have them shipped here, make sure that they're okay and look good, and then we're going to take care of them for about a week, make sure they're established, and hand them over to him. So that means we get to unbox some beautiful turtles today. We've got the pair of hatchlings in here. They actually came together. Yeah, a cool pack. pack. Oh, bubble wrap. Mm -hmm. Oh, they must both be in this deli together. Oh my gosh. They're going to be stunning. Two side necks Aww. and... Oh, whoa, wow. there they are. They are pretty. They are beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay, let's open them up. Like usual, I'm always having a hard time opening this package. Oh, whatever. Little baby side necks. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow, wow. they are adorable. They're beautiful. They look perfect. Hey, guys. No, oh. don't touch me. Well, here you can see why they're called side necks. It's for that behavior of tucking their head into the side when they're feeling bashful. I want to know why. Aren't they called short neck? Something short neck too? Yes, they're also called red bellied short neck turtles. So they have two like almost like similar but pretty different if you think about it. Common names, the pink bellied side neck and the red bellied short neck turtle. Oh, this guy is pretty outgoing, huh? He is. Let Aww. me go. Let me go. So the breeder wasn't able to confirm, like guarantee a male female, but we looked at their tails and we tried to pick out one that had a slightly smaller tail than the other. That would be this one, I think. Yeah. That one's most, might be a girl, maybe. We're attempting to get a pair with these two. Wow, they are just gorgeous. You can also see like this one has its nictitating membrane over its eye too, so we're Aww. a little shy. That's why the eyes look either really red like this one or they're kind of covered up in pink depending on if they have that membrane closed. Look at you! You are so outgoing! You just want to go, 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 don't you? Yeah, I think he's awake now. I think so. Now this is an excellent species of turtle to keep in captivity because they don't get very big. Like males only get about five to seven inches in diameter, whereas females can get upwards of nine. But compared to a red-eared slider, which gets like 12 to 14 inches in diameter, this is a lot more reasonable of a size to keep and maintain in captivity. They were pretty like readily available captive bred in the States uh, up until the 90s from what I've read. And then breeders were almost non-existent but they've made a comeback in the last several years and honestly i think they deserve more attention this is I can see why yeah well, these are the albino species I guess. right but even just the wild type is beautiful yeah, too they have like red cheeks mm -hmm. so, yeah i'll put a picture on screen yeah if i had to keep my neck like that to protect myself <laughs> man my neck would need to be realigned <laughs> right you have to see a chiropractor yeah I think the pink-bellied side-neck turtle is a more accurate name for them than red-bellied short-necked turtle. Yeah, I don't quite understand the short-neck thing. I mean, I guess compared to, like, some turtles, they might have a short neck, but then compared to some other turtles, they have a very long neck. Yeah. These are omnivores in the wild, and actually they're native to Australia and Papua New Guinea, I should have mentioned. So they're kind of a more exotic one for us to see here in the States. But since they're from Australia, you can't export animals from Australia. So they are all captive bred, the ones we have available. Unless there's a small chance that you had one that was exported from New Guinea, but chances are pretty slim. These are pretty much all captive bred, the ones that are available. Check out their belly. Oh, wow. it's got like a little pattern on it. Isn't that beautiful? He's got like a milk mustache. Oh, he does. 
Oh, you no, guys are so cute. I don't want to go. I don't want to be held like this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I wanted to look. You can actually see their tympanum or their, can you uh, see the hole yeah, there? Yeah. They have a tympanum just like frogs do. And that's, that's their hearing apparatus. Aww. He's so cute. There they are. Aww. Although they're omnivores in the wild and they eat things like invertebrates and algae and fish, carrion even, and aqu aquatic plants. In captivity, you can keep them maintained pretty easily and very successfully on a pelleted diet of a good quality pellet and shrimp and squid and other things like that. All right. Should we set up their tank? Yeah, let's set it up. Even though we're only planning on having these guys for about a week to just ensure that they're healthy and well-established babies before giving them to our friend, we still want to make sure they have a good setup for the week that they're here. So we're going to use this 29 gallon enclosure or tank essentially, and we need something for them to float on. So we're just going to use this. There we go. Perfect. We'll have to find a good way to like push that to one side so it doesn't float all around. Get a rock. Ah, touche. Yeah, that'll work. I'm not gonna... Switch, now it's your turn. Nope. Aww. So I was thinking, I found this piece of grape wood, and I figure if we can weigh it down here, then it can hold in the log there. This is a sweet rock. Yeah. Where'd you find this? You Over find it at the, the neighbors? Plant. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I think that's on their property. No, it's on both our properties. Yeah, so it's a shared rock. Yeah, it's a shared rock. Yeah, and it's cool. gonna go back out there when we're done here. That's true. It's just for a week. I think that'll work. Yeah. And this is not gonna fall. So that actually gives them something else to crawl on too. Perfect. Perfect. We're not gonna bother with any substrate for this because it's essentially a quarantine tank. We're just quarantining them here before they go to their permanent home. So without substrate, we can monitor their droppings a bit easier basically. And we can feed them a little easier too. Also, aquarium gravel is a sham of the, the fish industry. You shouldn't use it for turtles anyway. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> a sham. Yeah. There was an article I read that people were like, why did aquarium gravel get so popular? And it's like, it was a sham of like some big corporation making it, huh. you have to have it. I never thought of things. that. Yeah. But no fish has gravel like nope. that in the wild. They nope. all have sand. Exactly. I never thought of that. All right, good point. I learned something there too. So now we're going to add the filter and this is just gonna be a submersible aquarium filter, but it'll work fine for turtles. We're also going to slide this whole thing off to the side after filming this. We're not just gonna have a random turtle tank or are we gonna have a random turtle tank in the middle of our I mean, kitchen? it'll be more over here, <laughs> like right around here. It'll still be in our kitchen because we have no room in our house. Yep. Inside of the filter, we're using a combination of just a coarse uh, foam to catch debris, as well as pyrogen for the chemical filtration stage. We love pyrogen. If you have any aquatic animal, fish or axolotl or turtles, what have you, that needs a filter, I highly recommend pyrogen over carbon because you can recharge it and reuse it and you don't have to buy a new pack every month. Yep. Sorry, that's just me on my pedestal, soapbox. on my soapbox, yeah. Pyrogen's the way to go. Right, Ta-da! Cool. It works! Is there a lid for this thing? Nope. Didn't come with one? Okay. Nope. Well, it probably did. Oh, we're it's just... been sitting in our basement for about 10 years now. Though, yeah, that's so. true. Oh, does it work? Yes, I tested it. Okay. So, I mean, you can test it again. It looks really corroded. Yeah. Oh, oh it's, it's going to take, take a little bit. It's coming out. Yeah, I mean, it's it works. Yeah. What else do you need? These type of turtles like uh, lagoons old... anyways. They that's don't true. like rivers. They like still water. All right. Yeah, they will filter it slowly, but it should still work yep. for a quarantine setup. Exactly. Yeah. Got a heater for the water. Oh, so we have a heater and a filter now. Yep, that's all set. So now I think we just need the heat bulb for the basking spot as well as the UVB. Yep. I think that's all we're missing. Yeah, I think so. Okay. For the heat, we're going to use a halogen bulb since we're kind of converting all of our basking bulbs with those. They use a little less, elect actually a lot less electricity, but still provide a good basking spot. And for UVB, which is very important for all turtles, especially babies that are growing at a quick rate and they're gr developing those shells, we're going to use a fluorescent tube UVB because there, there's two styles of UVB lamps out there and this is kind of a, a tidbit for anybody who has a reptile that needs UVB. If you have the dome lamp with like the compact fluorescent light, the curly UVB bulb, those don't produce much UVB sadly and they're almost useless for reptile use. Instead you'll need the tube UVB bulb which will help spread the uh, UVB rays throughout more of the enclosure than just the coil one does and it actually produces UVB rays, whereas the compact fluorescent lights don't produce enough for your reptile to really benefit from them. So if you need UVB, 
get the tube bulb. As far as the tube bulbs go, there's actually two different types you can use. They're called T8 and T5. T8s are a little bit wider and T5s are these skinny bulbs, which we're using. We kind of converted everything to T5s because there's slightly more UVB output from these. But honestly, a T8 should also work. We just use the high output UVB bulbs. This we're going to position right on top of their basking area so they can soak it in. There we Yay. go. So again, we're going to move all of this over there, but it's hard to film over there, which is why we're setting it up over here on the counter. But we're definitely going to need a power strip. You're right. Yeah, really Turtles need at least four outlets dedicated to their setup. The basking lamp, the UVB bulb, the filter, and the heater for the water, assuming it's a species that needs heated water. So they, they require a lot of electricity, but you know what? They're awesome animals. Oh yeah, everything yeah. is running. Got everything running. You can see cords in the back. It doesn't look very attractive, but you know what? This will be great for the baby turtles. Uh, for a temporary tank, it'll be wonderful. Yeah, for a week setup, it'll be fine. Hi, little guys. Are you ready to put them in? Sure. Okay, I think the tank's ready. Yeah, the tank's definitely ready. Aww. Okay, let's put you in. Oh, I'm so excited to watch you swim around. We'll put you on the log so we can watch you dip in. There's one and two. Who's the bold one? And there's a train. Of course. Why wouldn't there be a train? <laughs> there was just a train that went by. Yeah. Less than like five minutes ago. Yeah, the trains are out today. They know we're filming. Come on, guys. Are you guys too shy? You can dip in. Go swim. What in the world? <laughs> Where the heck are we? This isn't right. I love how white their shells are. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're probably going to grow some algae on them. Oh yeah. Like, without a doubt. All turtles have algae on their back. They'll just show it. Yeah, so they're the prettiest they are going to be right now. Yep. Oh, 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 Boosh. look at them go. Oh, I'm glad the filter's kind of weak because I wouldn't want a current to blow them yeah. around. Aww. Are you just going to hang out by yourself on the log? There you go. Do it, do it, do it. Dive in. Yeah! Good job, little girl! Everything looks fine about them. Yeah. I mean, sometimes if they're in a deli, you can't tell if they're like... Favoring a leg or something. Mm-hmm. Another great thing about this species is that they are super hardy. I mean, they do, of course, have their needs just like any turtle does. I wouldn't say that they're completely bulletproof, but they are still a relatively easy species to keep as far as turtles go. And they get along with others for the most part. They're not like radiant sliders that like to bully other turtles around. Well, I'd say they like their uh, temporary quarantine setup. They're like all over and then they are quick swimmers. They like take off and they're gone in a flash and they seem to really like their basking platform too. So I wasn't sure if they'd be able to climb up or not, but they definitely can. So this should be a good setup for the time that we have them. They don't seem to like need to be next to each other at all though. Like she's all the way over there and he's over here. They kind of each do their own thing. Yeah, she's over there standing alone. Yeah. I put rocks up front because we were worried about them tipping over and getting stuck or wedged here in the corner. So that's what all those lava rocks are for. Or are for. But yeah, other than that, I think their setup is good to go. So we'll have them for about a week, make sure they're eating. I'm not even going to try to feed them today because after shipment, I'm sure they don't want to. But they should maybe start eating tomorrow and then after a week, we'll give them to our friend. So thank you everybody for watching us unbox these awesome albino pink-bellied side necks or red-bellied short neck turtles. So interesting how they have those two, two different common names. But regardless, they are stunning. I love them. I'm surprised they're not more common in the hobby. I'm sure it's just because they're hard to get because these are fantastic little turtles to have as pets. As always, I want to thank our amazing Patreon supporters for your fantabulous generosity on this channel. We seriously can't thank you guys enough. Also, thank you to everybody who's just here watching our videos and learning about reptiles. See, look, this is why I was worried about them getting stuck in the corner. Yep. Yeah, sorry, you can't get stuck there now. Yeah, she's like, how do I get into the water? I'm stuck in this corner. I'm so confused. <laughs> thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you next time.